Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to talk about 3D computer graphics. Over the past few years on my YouTube channels, I've created 3D graphics of all kinds of things, ranging from computer users to biocomputers and most recently bioprinters. In this video, I'm going to explain how these animations were created. Okay, well here I am at my desk where I create all my animations and indeed all my explaining computers videos. And I'm running a package called Lightwave, uh, which I use to produce all the 3D models. You can see here on the screen, the model of the um, cloud computing steamroller, you might remember from the um, cloud computing videos. Uh, this is built up in different layers, so we've got the main body of the engine, and then each part it has to move, the front roller, the back wheels, small flywheel, um, are all on separate parts. To make objects in Lightwave, basically if we create a, a new object here, uh, I've got a number of different tools available. So for example, if I create a disc, uh, this is a 12-sided um, polygon effectively, um, now, what I'm going to do here, just to show you how this sort of stuff works, to make nice smooth shapes, I'm going to get rid of the, the top and bottom of that. And I'm going to activate a feature called subpatching, which basically turns a very um, polygonal object into a nice smooth surface. If I then um, just do a few things to that, so maybe I cut it in two a couple of times, just knifing the object just very roughly. Um, I could then pick up the top polygons and maybe shrink those down a bit, maybe pick up the points on top of the object and extend them up a bit, maybe zoom out a little bit here, um, maybe extend the base of the object down quite a bit, not being terribly accurate, um, maybe down a bit more, down a bit more, and then maybe bring those together and merge those points in, push that up a little bit, and effectively what I've done is start to create something that looks a little bit like a bottle. So as you can see you very quickly go from a simple basic um, polygon or set of points to create an actual object, and that is how something like the steamroller here was actually created. If we look at the um, bioprinter that I created recently, the way I create most objects is first of all to start out with a drawing. So here's the basic drawing of the, uh, the bioprinter. You can see not a brilliant drawing, but it shows me roughly the types of shapes I'm going to use. Having done that, I then created a very simple object like you can see here, which is all the basic parts of the bioprinter, uh, but just in very, very simple shapes. And again, splitting it out into the different parts, which would have to move separately. Having created this basic object, and then went on to add a bit more detail. This, as you can see, is a more, more detailed version of, of the object. Then added a bit more detail. This is now starting to look quite like our, our final bioprinter. And then finally added on the final bits of detail. If I look at that with a bit more textures added, you can see we're heading towards something which is like the final object. Once you've got an object like this, I then take it into the a program called Layout, which is where we do all the actual animation. Okay, so here we are in the Layout package, where I've got the model and I've started to surround it with, with virtual cameras. If we look at the model through one of those cameras, this is going to be one of the first shots of the bioprinter. And we've also here started to put in um, some animation. So you can see here for that particular object, that's the bioprint head, it's got some keyframes added to actually animate it in certain positions to make it move back and forth. If we pick up, for example, another part of the object, uh, the, the rails there again, there are some um, keyframes set. I could go and alter that, see, move it up and down, and um, when I do that, um, set a keyframe like that with the keyboard, um, it will set things in place. You might also notice that things like these tiny ribbon cable here, cables here are all set up to automatically move correctly when we set up those particular frames. If we want to see what it's going to look like, I can make a render of 
the frame. This will take the computer a second just to work out what a final frame should look like. You're slightly constrained here in terms of the amount of the screen you can see, um, but this is a very rough render of the actual, um, how the animation will look. And I use rendering of that quality to produce test shots that look a bit like this. So here you can see a test render of the first big shot of the bioprinter. Quality is not very good, but this quality of shot allows me to test the animation and to put my edit together without having to spend too much time in rendering. When I'm certain that a shot's okay, I then go into um, what's called the render global setting, turn on all the really fancy things for rendering, what's called radiosity, which lights it with a nice sort of diffuse look, turn on things like shadows, transparency, occlusion, reflection, refraction, and then when I push render this time, it'll take quite a while to produce a final image. However, when that process is completed, we end up with a final shot that looks something like this. Three D computer graphics has traditionally been complex, time consuming, and expensive. However, today a few good free tools are becoming available. For example, over at extranormal.com, almost anybody can make their own 3D movie. There is also a sophisticated open source 3D package called Blender. This can be downloaded for free from blender.org and is a great introduction to 3D modeling and rendering. But now that's it for another video and I hope to talk to you again very soon.